Hey everybody, um, welcome to Tonal Trend Spotter Smarts Blog. Uh, today's video is called Chopper Beats and Meter Mayhem Part 1. And we're going to take a look at six songs that have some uh, unconventional beats happening in them. Um, okay, so I highly recommend though that in addition to watching this video, you listen to these tracks supplementally. Um, supplementarily, if that's a word. Um, I'll kind of do my best to hum them or like plunk them on my guitar or whatever, but in order to get a full appreciation for all these cool rhythmic tricks about to happen, uh, you really should go listen to them um, in the proper settings. Um, maybe pause the video if you need to, or use the red minute markings to zero in on them later. Um, okay, so this first one I'd like to take a look at is Mission Impossible theme. This classic 5B pattern, you know, just like... <coughs> So that one. Uh, it's not the new one from like the movies. Like that one's like, you know, just like your regular 4-4. Four, four. Still kind of a cool beat, but it's in 4-4. Four, four, so that's not exactly mayhem. Meter mayhem, anyway. I mean, it's got guns and everything. That's mayhem. Not music mayhem. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah, now when you're dealing with these crazy unconventional meters, what people like to do is to break them up into small components so they're easier to understand. For this example, there's two ways you could do this. Um, or ways to think of it. You got 5-4 and 3-4 plus 2-4, which would be kind of like this. ba ch ba ch ba 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 ch ba ch ba ba It's like that. Or, if you want to get fancier, you can think of it with this compound meter, 6-8, that's where you take the six eighth notes from this three four and put them in here, you know, six. So it'd be like this. Like, let me do a little slower. It's like that. Those are two ways to think of it. Uh, if you were going to break invention, like piss off the authorities, you could even count it in a kind of four four with extended first and second beats, you know, like. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. I mean, if you think there's only four notes, so why not do it that way? I mean, I'm not going to tell you to do it that way, because I got a little fuddy-duddy in me. But um, I will tell you a story. I had this friend once in high school. He's a bass player. He was just so excited, because like, he, he came up with this riff, right? It was just like this juicy diamond in his hand, you know? And like he was just like... Check it out, guys. Seven four riff. It's really dope, you know. It's something like you know, one two three four five six seven. One two three four five six seven. And that's how he counted it. I don't know if he caught was wrong with that, but at the end of the day, it made sense to him. So what's the big deal, right? <laughs> so, all right. Second, Hey Ya uh, by Outkast. We got this five and a half measure loop happening here, where it's twenty two beats, six bars, um, and the fourth bar, it's only two instead of four beats. All right, so kind of like, let me show you what I'm talking about. It's like, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, only two, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And that's just the loop for like the whole song. And it's just a conventional loop. I mean, most loops are eight bars, or 12 bars, or four bars. So you can even think of this loop as having cut out two bars from eight, and then six, and then cut out two more beats, and it's five and a half. See, it's just pretty cool. But yeah, you should write a loop like that someday. Pretty cool. Um, if you want to check out, uh, I already did a, a Spotter Sinks video on this song. So if you want, I'll probably put that up like up here or something like here, like with the little link. Um, check that out too, and you can check out other cool things about Hey uh, not just this little beat loop that they do. Uh, as a six bar beat, some people could even like think of they, they chopped out two measures even, because a lot of songs, most songs have like eight bar ideas, 12 bar ideas. Um, so yeah, it's really uncommon cool loop that was just, you know, lightning struck their brain with this loop. I don't know what happened. Next, Black Hole Sun by Soundgarden. All right, so in the solo section, there's six bars of nine four, or you could think of it as 12 bars of nine eight. Um, oh, and if you cross-reference this with the music video, so watch out, because that music video just gives me the hibbly jibblies and it freaks me out. Um, <laughs> Alright, anyway, so um, count it 6 8 or 9 4. It depends on if your main source of intellectual attachment is to the riff itself or to the drum beat, which has an accent placed on the 10th 8 note. Um, it's a beat that totally justifies counting it in the pattern of 
nine, eight song. Let's kind of look at it a little bit. It's like, and that's the riff, right? If you do that on our fingers, we can do it like this. Again, like remember that. So, um, if you think of it, nine eight though. Now check this out. All right, check this out. Do 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 do. Bang da 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 bang. And so that works too. I mean, it's cool you can think of it both ways, but I prefer nine four mostly because the song ends with just one repetition of the riff, and to me it's just neater. You know, when you think of it as like one rhythmic unit. Um, so, also I like 9 4 because you don't really have a reason to stop banging your head in quarter note beats until the middle of the phrase anyway. You know, it's like, you know, what was that? What was that? I bang my head, you know? Like, so, that's just another good reason for me. But, I mean, if you need some ammo for arguing why you should think this in 9 8, Notice that the last note of the riff lasts the whole 9-8 bars. So remember, it's like, do, 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 So, um, notes that last the whole measure are also kind of aesthetically pleasing in their way. So you got that going for your case, um, if you're a 9-8 person. Um, incidentally, this doesn't really have anything to do with Chopper Beats or Meter Mayhem. But well, also notice that in this section, the guitar solo is happening over a guitar riff. So that doesn't happen a lot. Usually, guitar solos happen over rhythm guitar parts or chords and stuff. So, you could do that. Seriously. You won't get a ticket. I promise. Try sometime. Alright. Next up, Ring of Fire, Johnny Cash. One of the first places I think of when people are like, what's the chopper beat? Is the trumpet line from this song. So what you got is a country beat, 4-4 four, four time, and every time the trumpets play the little riff, you got this little chopper beat there, 3-4-4-4. Four, four, four. Um, so yeah, you know, it's like... Something like that, right? I'm still on our fingers. So yeah, it's just... Pretty cool way to do up a song. Um, and then about 50 seconds in though, more meter mayhem. The chorus, they sneak in a 2-4. It's like this, and it burns, burns, burns. That ring of fire, that ring of fire. And if you missed that, check it out on the fingers. And it burns, burns, burns. That ring of fire, that ring of fire. So, pretty sneaky, pretty cool. Um, Next up, at uh, about a minute 30, they're not done with all this chop beat or chop, chopping, burning stuff, you know? Um, what they do now is, instead of chopping a beat, they chop a note. So they chop the first note of the trumpet riff, so it's like this. And... Ba -da 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 -da. Three, four... Ba -da 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 -da. Just kind of making a little room there. I mean, you never notice that unless you're really paying attention to the songs. So it's just really slick ways to play with our musical subconscious or whatever they're doing there. Um, the last thing that I think is pretty cool um, after the chop a no is what can you do? Don't chop. So like, yeah, at the end it keeps the 4-4, four four, right? You know, you go from, you know, cool little chop a thing, you know, add a little 2-4, uh, chop a no, and just leave it how it is. You know, so it's just backwards. It's cool. It's just like, you know, so who knows if they did that um, on purpose or like if that was in the score or they were just messing around, but yeah, sneaky. Love it. All right, on to the next one. Number five is called Everybody Breaks a Glass by Lights. Um, and this is uh, the acoustic version, by the way, not the regular version. Um, that's important. So just like a month ago, one of my students showed me this YouTube of uh, this girl playing guitar. And at first I was like, okay, young pop star with a, you know, with a guitar, probably just like three or four chords. And yep, it's three or four chords. But 
Then I started to get a handle on the rhythm. And I'll tell you, I was just like this old fuddy-duddy pirate from Peter Pan just trying to fight Tinkerbell, you know? Just like, get away from me, pixie devil. Like, ah, my brain exploded. But yeah, seriously though, check out how she organizes this. I'm going to try to do her justice, but it really blows my brain. All right, so something like, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, you know, ba na 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 da That's the melody right there, you know. Everybody breaks a glass. Something like that. That's not the right lyrics, but... Anyways, you gotta check out this video on um, Google Lights Acoustic, this version of the song. You'll find it. It's on some like radio channel station on YouTube, you know, she's wearing a yellow shirt. Um, oh yeah, and it has to be noted that in the regular version, it's just 4-4. Four, four. But it's the same melody, you know, like it kind of counts like this. Da 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 na 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 I'm breaking some glass and I like it. That's, I just made that up, that's not the lyrics. But listen to the song, great song. Uh, listen to that version, the 4-4, four, four. I don't know if you call it club mix or whatever it is, I don't know. Kids these days are defiant genres. They're doing what they want. And especially since you can count the acoustic version from YouTube um, in 4-4, four, four, but it's really hard to. I mean, it, just, it doesn't feel right. You really have to work at it to get it right. And, I mean, that's your first indicator that you probably shouldn't count it in 4-4. Four, four. And first indicator why we should organize it this way in the first place. Okay, last, though, is a tonal trend spotter. I just love this kind of example, though, because normally when you think of math rock and, like, complex rhythmic patterns, you think of, like, dudes in tool t-shirts with, like, Ibanezes cranked up to 11 who are making it a point that they're, make, you know, playing math rock, you know? They're just like, you know, you know, I'm them playing math rock, I am playing math rock, I am playing math, math rock, math, math, math rock, rock, you know? I mean, here you got something that goes against the trend with a pop star in like a University of Ohio like yellow t-shirt playing a tailor cross-legged on a couch and you don't even notice the complex pattern I mean, until you try and count it so just a testament to creativity you know, like it my last, saving the best for last Strawberry Fields Forever by the Beatles okay, all kinds of crazy stuff happening here it starts with in the intro they just add a little 2-4 or chop it you know, whichever way you want to think, it's fine. It's like a halfway period. Um, you know, that classic intro with that Mellotron, I think it's called. You know, da 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 one two three. Let me take you down. Good. Catch that? Pull two four in the fourth measure. Um, then I do another two four, uh, choppy in in the verse at about two six. That's like when I sing it. Nothing to get hung about. Boom, boom, boom. Again, it goes like, nothing to get hung about. Do, 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 do. Not sure what hung about means, or is that what they're saying? Hung about? Anyways. Um, so, yeah. Oh, yeah. And three seconds later, we got a 6 8 thrown in there. Like, who just thinks, like, I'm going to throw a 6 8 bar in my 4 4 beat? Not many people think that. You should try it someday. Um, I should try it someday. Um, Strawberry feels forever. Two, three, four. And I put that 4-4 four, four in after there because it's important. Why? Because nextly, when it happens next time, there's an extra 4-4. Four, four. You know, stroke bed with feels forever, two, three, four. And then you have extra 4-4 four, four, four beat to make room for like this fun little Mixolydian scale riff played on the, you know, the Swore Mandel, or maybe it's called Sword Mandel, or Howie Mandel, or whatever. But um, uh, it's just this Indian version of the zither. Google it, look at it, it's cool looking. Um, it's not something like this. So, so miscellaneous scale, cool stuff. All right, towards the end, we got this, uh, first three minutes, we got this crazy repetition of the title tag, Strawberry Fields Forever. Let me just take it through real quick. Strawberry fields forever, two, three, four. Strawberry fields for only three. Strawberry fields forever, two, three. Ba da 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 da
why would you ever think to write that? Um, one of my theories is that, you know, they're playing a lot with cutting tape, like literally cutting the tape and splicing together takes, so that's one way it could have happened, but anyways. Um, oh yeah, also, another thing about the outro is, it further confuses the beat, is in the outro, the first 4-4 four, four measure starts with a quarter note and then a dotted half note. So after this, it was like, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So that kind of extra, like, step down just makes it really cool. Um, after the first fade out, that's right, they have like two fade outs, I don't know, it's crazy. After the first fade out, comes back in, and at 334, I have no idea what's going on there. Um, I could probably get my phrase trainer, slow it down, and just, you know, really crack my brain open over it, but I'm not going to because it's just like, you know, it's craziness. So, I mean, <laughs> if you want to figure out what time that is in there, I'm going to listen to it. I'll come over to your house and I'll give you five dollars, but I'm not messing with that. So, on that lighter note, I hope you enjoyed uh, Tonal Trends, Spotter Smarts, Choppy Beats, and uh, Meet of Mayhem Part 1. And we'll see you uh, next time. Thanks for watching! An old fuddy-duddy pirate from Peter Pan, you know, trying to fight off Tinkerbell, you know, just like, get away from me, little pixie devil! Pixie devil! Ah, ah. Ah, ah. You know, I was just like, my brain was just like... Pfft.